pastry chef Steve. He founded and owns Temper Chocolate and Pastry in West Vancouver. I love sweets. I love this place. I wish I lived, well actually, if I lived next door, if I lived in your neighborhood, I'd be there every day. So I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> anyway, I want to welcome Steve and he'll talk about his pastry. The, the vision of Temper actually for me started in the beginning of my cooking uh, industry 13 years ago. Some of the best advice I ever had was actually from my parents. And they told me, whatever you decide to do in life, do it the best you can, be the best and be passionate about it. And for me, innovation really comes down to passion. And if I can install anything to anybody is, whatever you decide to do, whether you're a pastry chef, whether you're a garbage man, whatever it is, be the best at it. And with that comes so many opportunities, um, great opportunities. And through that comes failure. And in innovation, failure is great because you learn from it. I've worked for so many people in actually my short career, because usually you hear stand up here and you see older chefs, they say, oh, I've been cooking for 20, 25 years. I've been cooking for 13 years, but I've actually been cooking my whole life because the best chef I ever worked for was my mom. So I grew up cooking next to her. She was my biggest critic. She she put me in a position to understand what innovation was for me throughout my career so I could go off and open my own business. Um, that takes me to the vision of temper. Um, back when I was 22 or 23, my dad took me on a fishing trip in Corporate Lake. And the guy that owned the lodge stocked his own lake and he was an ex-chef from England. And my dad was all excited. My son wants to be a chef, we gotta take him here. Um, we, gotta, we gotta take him here, introduce him to this guy, get him all excited, get this guy excited. So I met this chef, he was probably in his 70s, late 70s, and he said one thing to me, that's always stuck to me, he said, what do you wanna do in your career? Do you wanna work for someone the rest of your life, or do you wanna own your own business? And I said, in my head, you know, yeah, I want my own business, I want my own empire one day. And I said to him, I said, yeah, I want my own business. He said, so from here on out, work, as, work for as many guys as you can and learn as much as you can. And when you are ready to go on your own, you will know when that day is. So I did that. Um, at that time, I was in culinary. I, I just finished culinary school. I came back from California. So I did my training in uh, Southern California in Pasadena, uh, CSCA, California School of Culinary Arts. I did some stages down in West Hollywood. Uh, West Hollywood. I worked for Spago Catering, that was Wolfgang. Did an apprentice there. I worked for Porto's Bakery in Glendale, California. And then I worked for Dominic's Restaurant in uh, Hollywood. With that, I made the move back home and I got a job as the opening pastry chef um, for the original coast, which was the Global Guys. There I met my wife, who's here tonight. And at that point in my career, I was still young. I decided, okay, what do I want to do with my career? I knew I wanted to open my own place. I knew I wanted to work for a lot of people. At that point, I didn't know who I wanted to work for. So I did my research and I realized that I was a very, I'm a very competitive person. I come from a sports background. You could put me on a soccer field and I would tell you, I would look you in your eye and say, I'm better than you, I will kick your ass, you know? Uh, you could put me in any situation in the kitchen as a young chef, I would go in that kitchen, I'd, I'd watch all the moves that chef would do and I'd say, I'm better than you, I, could, I can outcook cook you right now. That was my mentality. Some call it a big ego, some say it's cockiness, it's confidence, you know? And I think confidence takes you far in life in whatever you do, it, it confidence to, uh, build the leadership with leadership. You can portray motivation to other people. Um, so from that point, um, I, I tend to ramble. My mind goes a mile a minute. Right now, I'm actually thinking about how to keep my daughter in her kryptonite. She came out the other night, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's another story. Um, yeah, so I came back here. I was opening Chef for Coast restaurant. I decided I wanted to work with the best. So my wife and I packed up uh, moved to London, England, and uh, I'll never forget that day. We uh, pulled up 
to Paddington Station with our suitcases. I had one buddy living there. I knew nothing about London, but I did know it was at the time the city with the most Michelin star restaurants. So I had no clue where I was gonna work. Long story short, two and a half years later, I worked in three of the top restaurants in the world. First, it was Le Caprice. Uh, second was uh, Gordon Ramsay, Royal Hospital Road, three Michelin star, and then the famous Wolseley. So, well, I was actually thinking about staying longer in London uh, and working for more guys. I got a phone call from a famous pastry chef in Vancouver with the help of my mom, because she was her, his regular customer, and she said, oh, you need my son back home, and blah, blah, blah. It was Thomas Haas. And uh, four and a half years later, after being Thomas Haas's uh, chocolatier, I knew it was time for me to go on my own. And then came the temper vision. And uh, four and a half years after working for Thomas Haas, and, you know, the guy is amazing. I learned a lot. I learned a lot on the cooking side. I learned a lot on the business side. It was ready to go on my own, and then there was temper. And temper to me, the, the vision of temper on the innovation side of it, it was every single piece of the puzzle where I worked, it came together. So during the years, I had no clue what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to own a pastry shop. I had no clue what it was gonna, how it was gonna be. But from that experience of learning from other people, and my advice to anyone that finds what they want to do, always go out and learn. There's never, you can never stop learning. If you have your own business, go out and take classes in what you do. There's always someone better than you. And you can take that advice from that person to make yourself better. And that's what I did in order for me to open temper. So, um, I'll never forget that day I decided, I, was, I woke up, I said, you know, this is time. Put together my business plan, presented it, really with the vision of, you know, thinking the big picture. I'm gonna open temper, I'm gonna open a second place, I'm gonna open a third place. And I really needed to be grounded by some certain people in my life to just, you know, you need to focus. I think it was my ADA was kicking in. Um, ADA, ADA. DH or whatever, <laughs> and uh, um, so at that point, um, everything came together really without me writing it on paper. My whole experience was right in front of me because of what I did in my career. Um, if you haven't been to Temper, it was the the innovation stage of Temper was bringing elements of Europe to, in, in the West Coast together with the design. I knew that the food that we wanted to create at Temper was going to be a European-based food style. And from living in Europe and seeing how the community is over there, and I, we lived in small pockets in London, so we would walk down to the local butcher shop, we would walk down, walk down to the local pastry shop, the local coffee shop, and we got to see the community and, and these people come together and sit for hours and talk and this and that. And that's what I wanted to bring to Vancouver. And I, that's one thing I think North America is missing in our food scene, in our food culture, is that, that gathering of that community and, and you know, just saying, you know, let's relax, let's enjoy life, let's enjoy the flavors, the tastes. It, we're such a, um, a fast-paced culture here. It's, it's, let's get this as fast as we can and get out. And I noticed that when actually Temper first opened, because our biggest complaint was, oh, I had to wait five minutes for a coffee. Well, I'm just thinking, I'm, in my head, I'm like, really? Like, enjoy it. Enjoy the atmosphere. Enjoy the music. And that's what I wanted to bring in my business. That's what I wanted to share with the community. I could have easily come downtown in a busy area. And, you know, in the future, I think I, I probably will do that as the business grows. But in the beginning, I wanted to go to a community, a community where I grew up, where... I experienced uh, my travels, my, um, my knowledge to the people that have never seen that. And I wanted to bring people together that didn't know other people and enjoy, enjoy certain things in life. And you see it with Intempera. I will stand in line up today from the first time we opened our doors and two people not ever knowing each other and now having those regulars come back and they're having coffee together. And, to me, with a business and innovation, that's, it's, it's about the passion and what you do. 
And um, that was my vision for Temper. Uh, obviously, you know, you're always constantly innovating. They, you know, they say, uh, well, that guy's a perfectionist. Well, you can try to be a perfectionist, but if you're perfect, what's the point of living? You know, you always need to strive for something else. You always want to make yourself better. You always want to set your, you always want to set your goals and set your heights and set yourself with people that go like this. Because whenever you set yourself with people that go like this, as a culture, we tend to fall with people like that, and we get sidetracked in what we really want to accomplish in our life. So, um, I just ramble on and on and on and on. Right, uh, Richard, I said, Richard, so we get a half an hour up here. He's like, no, you got 10 minutes. I said, really? Uh, come on. Um, yeah, so, with temper is, you know, we constantly try to strive to innovate our product, but keeping it simple. Um, you know, we're going to add some modern twists and techniques, but at the end of the day, it's a croissant. You can't do too much to a croissant. Um, but we try to make it the best we can. So we're always, you know, today's croissant, uh, why doesn't it taste like yesterday's? Well, we're always looking at, we always want to make it one step better. You know, customers may not see that, 90% of the customers, but we know that. And if we don't do that, we failed in our job and we feel in our passion and what we do. So never stop striving to be better at what you do. Uh, where I want to take Temper in the future is right now it's a community-based shop. That's what we love about it. Um, eventually I would love to expand it. I would love to expand it in two cities where I work, California and London. But I think big and uh, you know I think great innovators have to think big. Because if you don't have those goals and you have nothing to work at, you won't succeed in life or in whatever you do. So, thank you so much.